Hello, this is Mark here at Gary's Guitars, and I'm here to talk about Fender Squire guitars. Um, country of manufacture, uh, what makes them good, what makes them, what makes the good ones better, and all that kind of stuff, and just kind of give you a brief history. I'm just going to be doing this off the top of my head. Some of this information is out there in other places, some of it's woven in. So, let's get going. In uh, 1982, Fender uh, felt a lot of pressure from the uh, Japanese guitar manufacturers. Um, because companies like Kramer and um, Ibanez and factories, the Tokai uh, Guitar Company, they were all making inexpensive, great guitars. And Fender at the time weren't making the greatest guitars. The Fender chairman, uh, the famous Bill Schultz, actually worked for Yamaha for some time, so he really knew about Japanese production. And uh, his, his solution was to make another line that they could price more reasonably to compete with the Japanese guitars, uh, but they wouldn't kind of sully the Fender name. And so Squire was used. Squire was a string company that Fender had acquired years before. And um, it just kind of rang good because remember they had the Esquire guitar, you know, in the, in the 50s. So it kind of just made sense. It was a good name. So they began Japanese production of Squires in about 1982. And they also use these Jap uh, Japanese companies to make, um, there's a few, they, they ended up working with Fuji Gen, mostly, but initially they, you know, they, they were, you know, trying to license out production to different companies. Uh, they made some kind of abbreviated, you know, they had the, the bullet guitar and, you know, some kind of squires that were just a little, uh, 10% smaller. I actually have a Squire P bass. It's just 10% smaller than a regular P bass. I like it because a 32 inch scale length is pretty fun. Um, but they, uh, where was I, 1984, 1985, uh, it was going all right. Bill Schultz was turning the company around slowly, but the company was mismanaged by the higher ups in the CBS company. So Bill Schultz led the, uh, the employee revolt, um, and put together the investor group that would buy the company and, uh, reinvigorate it in the years to come. And they did that in 85. They didn't get the factory when they bought it. They didn't get the real estate. They got the name, they got the copyrights and all that. They were factoryless. And so in 1985, they actually, all manufacturing went to Japan for about a year and a half. Um, including the Squire manufacturing. Also, early on, the, early on the Squire program, they loved the Squire so much, they would sell out. They were too good. Um, I was told you know, stories about they would use razor blades to scrape the, the Fender name off and rebrand them Squires just to fulfill orders once in a while. So there are USA Fenders out there with Squire logos on them. Not a lot, but it's, it's, a, it's a funny enough story that um, it makes a point. Uh, these 80s made in Japan Fender Squires are great. Um, they're slowly becoming more popular. It used to be able to make yard sales, but now people have gotten wise to it, and in the used market, they're, they're climbing up, and they're, they're really a great guitar. And then, so Fender restarted their U.S. production as well in the mid to late 80s. They, um, they were able to make their own guitars in, in North America, and, uh, but they continued to use, you know, the Japanese Fender Japan partnership. It was actually a partnership between Fujigen and Fender. Um, that were able to make the Fender guitars for Japan in Japan in order to compete in their local market well, which they still do to this day. On this day, uh, Fender bought out, I think, the Fujigen partnership company, but they still they're still Japanese production Fenders. Their Japanese uh, the Fujigen factory makes some of the reissues uh, throughout the years and special you know, set neck models that, that are difficult to make in the U.S. Um, and so let's, let's say fast forward in the 1980s, most of the 1980s, 82 to 87, Fender Squire instruments are made in Japan and they're really good. So they decided to transition, they, 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 they were turning their Mexican factory, which did amp, uh, Fender Rhodes pickup winding, I think, they did amp, amp assembly and stuff in, in a Mexican factory. They decided to do guitar production in that factory there in their own factory to make their squires in a factory that belonged to them south of the border keep the prices down a little and keep those that USA keep the USA buoyant and so that the, the guitars for the masses 
and the guitars that they could charge a premium price for. Now there's a transitional period in the late 88 and 89 when those Fenders were, Squires were made in the USA. Um, they're difficult to identify, but that is that exists you know, between the Japanese production and the Mexican production. Mexican production began. Also made Mexico instruments are great, most of them. Um, the only shortcomings of any of them is really just some hardware, maybe some material selection or whatever, but the, you can you can easily find a great made in Mexico Fender as you can a great made in the USA Fender. And maybe some hardware upgrades. Now on the latest made in Mexico Fenders, they actually um, they've even out the hardware. All the hardware is, is the same quality. They're no longer trying to make the Mexican factory the little the cheap factory and although they make their less expensive guitars, they they make now make guitars that you know cost thousands of or thousand plus dollars. So the uh, the materials qualities have, have gone up. But you can never say that these Mexican made uh, squires were were bad at all. Now, next country manufacturer, Korea. Korean instrument makers are um, um, just, they make great pianos, great guitars, especially Epiphone was making, made some great Korean guitars in this period too. So in the 1990s, Korean manufacturing opened up for Fender. I've seen some of these Korean instruments. I own one that was made by the same company. I own a Grand Prix that was made by Young Chang that also made Fender Squires. And some Fender branded some inexpensive, so uh, that would have the Fender in big letters and the Squire in little letters. They, they, they never settled on the branding quite well. So there's some Fender branded instruments made in Korea in this, in this period too. They're great sounding playing instruments. Um, however, they're often, as most often as I've seen them, they have plywood bodies, which is like, what? Plywood bodies? How is that possible that sounds any good? It does. Like I said, I have one. The Grand Prix, also made in the same factory, and you, you can kind of look underneath the. So over time, the plies just kind of show through the show through the paint just a little bit, especially underneath the neck. You can actually see the plies. Despite that, um, really good quality instruments, and they're still inexpensive. You can find one, grab it, uh, especially the bases. I kind of I have a soft spot for the bases. I have a friend who has one. We've had them come through the store. There's something pretty nice about those Squire Main Korea bases. And then, after that, we go to Indonesia manufacturing. The need to cram, so now we're talking the mid-90s, early 2000s, the need to push that pricing down um, to have the $199 guitar and to make a high profit item. And a lot of companies were doing this. Uh, going to, this, you know, so, um, going to these uh, young manufacturing countries, these countries without a great manufacturing history, but were willing to make stuff for cheap. Now, when we talk about Indonesian squires, um, it took some time for those to get to a certain quality. I see some of those uh, late 90s, early 2000s Indonesian squires, you know, their necks go a little funny. or I think it's mostly uh, workmanship and materials, just deficits here and there. Um, they're not a guitar I necessarily recommend. Now, Indonesian production in the last 10 years has gotten great. We know that um, companies like Paul Reed Smith and uh, who else? Yamaha and Fender are making high quality guitars in Indonesia. So, where does that lead us? Oh, going to mainland. There's a little bit of Indian production, uh, and probably the same situation as the Indonesian production. Uh, Indian production and Vietnamese production in the music uh, instrument business is really trying to get that, maximize that price downward pressure. Um, but China was a breakthrough too. Now Fender made some instruments branded Fender in China, but also started making some Squires in China, some of the contemporary series. Chinese manufacturing has gotten really good in these guitars. Uh, we sell the Fender Squire contemporaries as good as the 80s Japanese stuff, I would say. Now people get angry when I say things like that. Um, because there's, you know, how can something made in China be as good as a, an American or, or the or the Japanese version? It's kind of like cars. You know how there's like uh, you know American cars are the best. Well, Japanese cars are all right too. And then the Kia came around. It's like well, maybe Korean cars are good too. And then like I don't know if I trust you know something made in China, but like slowly, production quality has been raised in China, in Vietnam, and in, in Indonesia that they're making things that compete. Uh, quality-wise. So, I'm almost out of breath. I think we're done for today. That's the Squire story. 
So, to sum up, made in Japan anything that's Fender style, get it, if you can get it uh, at a good price. Uh, made in Korea, decent stuff. Made in Mexico, decent stuff. Made in Indonesia, be careful. It's got to be newer made in Indonesia stuff, not the early made in Indonesia stuff. Made in China, there might be one or two years of like, hmm, I don't know about this. And then since then, just really great. Um, we're really happy to have the Made in China and Made in Indonesia instruments here for the same reason they created Squire. For $399 in today's money, which was in 1980, you know, $150 because of inflation and, and uh, the buying power of the dollar. So super cheap um, by any standards for the quality you get, an instrument that you could play for the rest of your life. So I've gone past the 10 minute mark, I think. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Thanks for watching. Garrett's Guitars, Sports in New Hampshire. Just subscribe and like. I should say that stuff at the beginning of the video. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. Leave comments. Um, Instagram. This is YouTube. Facebook. Uh, anywhere else. Uh, just try and find us and make some contact. And thanks a lot for watching.